Welcome to 60 Skills. Today we are going to discuss the importance of power in the meditative, yogic, and magical arts. All right. This makes a lot of people uncomfortable talking about power and its necessity in this context. But this is what I can have to say after having looked at this for over 30 years. The simple fact of the matter is, having adequate power makes the achievement of enlightenment much easier. It also makes thaumaturgy possible. And truth be told, I've never seen any advantage to being weak in any regard. Weak in body, weak in mind, weak in energy, weak gen in general. So, what does power have to do with the meditative, yogic, and magical arts? In terms of the path of enlightenment, power is very important because having large amounts of vital energy and the ability to transmute it through well-developed fascia and tissue and ligaments and tendons makes it much easier to turn into astral energy, makes it much easier to turn into mental energy, makes it much easier to access the akasha or the power of the void, and then make that hop, skip, and a jump over to non-dual light. The fact of the matter is, I have never ever met a single individual who achieved non-dual light without having a fair amount of power in the esoteric sense at their disposal. I simply think it is impossible. I could be wrong about this. Now, with thaumaturgy, or literally miracle working, the role of power is much easier to understand. If you are bringing something down into form, this takes, at a minimum, a tremendous amount of astral energy that needs to be bridged into the physical. And the ability to do this requires a tremendous concentration and, for the most part, well-developed ligaments, tendons, and fascia tissue. Now, this does not mean you have to be an enormous human being, either. The simple fact of the matter is, some of the strongest practitioners I've ever met were absolutely tiny. What they were was incredibly wiry, had very little body fat of any kind, and an almost inhuman level of connectivity within their body. They could literally push all of their weight to a point in a single finger. That's how well developed their connective tissue was. This made them a hyperconductor of energy, which then made it very easy for them to discover and encounter different states of reality and to bring things down into form. Big, strong people, on the other hand, in a conventional sense, have an advantage in that they simply have more tissue to work with, and this allows them to bridge more energy. So you don't have to be a huge weightlifter to be successful at the meditative and yogic arts. What you do have to be is having an incredibly connected body. This is one of those things that often puzzles me. People talk about the Buddha and his vow of ahimsa and all of the rest, all of which is very true. But the part that they left out is that the Buddha came originally from a warrior class family. All of the various body trainings and body development and working with soft tissue were things that would have been ingrained into him as a child. This, in turn, made him a superconductor for energy. This, in turn, made it relatively easy, relative to other people, to achieve these high states of mental enlightenment. Now, again, you can have an older person who did this work 30 years ago, and they still have the ability to make contact with these things. Typically, what they lack, however, is the ability to stay there for very long. Again, the transmutation of energy that has to take place to propel your consciousness into these higher states of reality is relatively expensive. That, ex that expense can be greatly reduced by being a superconductor for energy on an effective level. But the simple fact of the matter is, a strong mind and a weak body almost never happen in practical experience. So I'm not telling you that you have to go out and become a gymnast or a power lifter or any of this other kind of business. What I am saying is that your body has to be highly well trained in order to conduct energy most efficiently. And it's this conduction and transmutation of energy that makes achieving the path of enlightenment or the chain of manifestation far easier to do. 
So this is one of the reasons why power in a meditative, yogic, and magical sense is extremely important. Now, if you're engaging in something like evocation or the physical manifestation of a spirit or entity, it's very easy to see just how important this is. But, as I've mentioned repeatedly throughout the course of this lecture, it's also extremely important for the path of enlightenment as well for the vast majority of human beings that I have met. So, I want you to put a little bit of thought into how you're going to go about training your body. Because when you're an old, broken down man like me, it may be a little too late to do a lot of this fundamental level work. So, you need to do it as you can, while you can, when you can, to the degree you can. And then, apply it to the rest of your practice. The interesting part is building that structure into the body, if it doesn't stay with you for the rest of your life, it certainly appears to stay with you for a very long time. So, at the end of the day, a couple hours a day for a few years might be time well spent. If you enjoyed the topic of today's lecture, please hit the subscribe button down below and give us a like. And if you'd like to learn more about the 60 Skills system, please check out the links and the details down below. Otherwise, have a great day and be well.